Hello, hello, my lovely ladies. Oh, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to play with a new palette from 5050. It's their autumn palette. It's the fourth palette in their fourth season, so she's done now. And this is the palette. It's very grungy, very full, and I am going to play with this palette in this video. I'm going to create this look, and at the end, I'm going to tell you what I think of this palette. So if this sounds interesting to you, then please keep on watching. And if you're new here, then hi or welcome. My name is Anne Chris. I'm 37 and on my channel, I want to inspire you to play with color, use some color every day by creating fun, colorful looks, but keeping them a little bit more elegant and less loud. So, you know, you can actually wear them every day. I also try out a lot of new makeup, especially from high-end and indie brands. That's just my jam. So if this is totally your jam as well, then please consider subscribing. I upload two to three times a week, so there's always something fun to watch now for this palette this is the autumn one it's the fourth one in her like four seasons as i said and as you can see it's really really grungy it is really stunning the i think it's such a cool color story but very dark so i was a little bit like okay how am i going to make a look that is actually fun but i can wear every day and i think i I think I got close. I think I got close. This palette retails for 15 euros and you can find it on their website. She's not selling in any other stores yet, just on her own website. I will link the palette down below, of course, and please browse the website a little bit because she has some stunning products. I love her highlighters. I love all her eyeshadow palettes. I think I have them all now. I love them all. And she also has a lot of loose pigments that are very fun uh, to create that little pop of color if you want something fun for your look. Okay. And without further ado let's get into how i got this look so we're going to do a look with this baby today it is very crunchy as you can see i am going to have a very chill night tonight so i think i can experiment a little bit but because i'm wearing like this pinky reddish sweater i'm going to at least work with this one and going to create a look around that because i always loved it like very red tone terracotta type of shade. So I'm going to go into Blood Moon first. And I'm just going to use a Wayne Goss number 18 and I'm going into the shade and I'm going to very slowly work it in my outer corner and see how far I can take it. Oh, it's really nice. It's a really beautiful, like reddish brown color. Very nice of it. They have this beautiful red color as well in the So beautiful the whole palette is beautiful but that shade is really stunning okay i'm just going to keep it a little low for now because i really don't know where i will go from here what i do like it's a little bit more firmer pressed so you don't really get kick up there's no kick up in the pan at all so that is really clean i usually don't mind it but sometimes they can be so softly pressed, it's a little bit scary to use them. But these are, you know, great. Taking my MAC 221S brush and I'm going into this shade, which is called Hello's Eye. It's a beautiful deep, it looks like a deep chocolate. I'm going to put that in my outer corner. Taking my refer number 13 brush and I'm going into this shade, which is called Chestnut. And I'm using this shade to work on that blend between that, well, what's it called? Blood Moon color and the Hello's Eye color to make it more of a blended cohesiveness. Taking my wing gauze brush again, and I'm going to blow out that Blood Moon palette a little bit higher. But I'm not going to dip it back into the pan, I'm just using the product that is already on the brush. But I want to blend it up a little higher than it is right now. Well, this is grungy. This is almost, this is really full. It's truly, really full. Taking my Smith Arrowhead 253 brush and I'm going into this Pumpkin Spice Shimmer Shade. It's nice, but it, it feels as if there's some sort of 
a patchiness going on. So I think I'm going to spray my brush to make it a little more foiled. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's way better. It just needs a little spritz, guys. It just needs a little spritz. Wow, and the effect is almost like instant. You've got like this almost melted metal on your eyes. It looks really beautiful. Okay, wow, a little spritz. A little spritz, guys, it's all you need. I cleaned off my Smith Arrowhead brush and I'm going to take it into this one. This is Decay and this is a duochrome green to, I don't know if I can show you, to like a reddish, deep reddish terracotta brown shade and i'm going to put this in my outer corner i don't know how that is going to look but we're going to do it anyway just to deepen it up a little bit you probably won't see the shift at all but that's i don't mind that it's just i want to deepen it up a little bit and i want to deepen it up with a shimmer and i also think it's fun to see how they look together yeah, I think they can handle it. I even think I'm going to take the decay a little bit further up the eyeball. Like so. Because there's this duochrome action in there. I think that could be good. I think that actually looks fun, don't you? Yeah, I think it looks good. Fun. All right. I want to have something in my inner corner, but it's too... Everything in here is just too dark because i don't think this will work no no that won't work i'm going to pull in the aphrodite palette by 50 50 and i'm going to use this shade that is called swan it's more like a very light pink so i have to see if it works but i think it might so let's try that i'm going to take a small brush i'm going to take my morphe m213 it's really small and I'm going to concentrate this very much into my inner corner. It is really light and it is a little bit too pink. But I think I can make it work. I just don't want a very abrupt end to that like beautiful pumpkin spice shade. And I didn't want to pull something like... I could pull nylon from MAC, you know, but I think this can work. All right, that's it for now. I'm going to go and do the rest of my face and then I will come back and we're going to do the lower lash line because I think we can do something fun there as well. Okay, so I finished up. I put on some gloss from Fenty. This is in the shade Fuzzy. We all know it. And I'm going to go and finish up my lower lash line. And I think I want to play with one of the greens or both of the greens because I want to have some contrast. And I want to just use a lot of the shades to... I'm going to take my E65 brush from Sigma and I'm going in that poison, 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 poison shade. I'm going to just run this on my lower lash line. And it is a little bit, I know it's a little bit out there, but I think it's going to be a fun way to try more of the shades in this palette. This is just stunning, grungy, swampy green. Loving it, leveling it up. I love these types of greens. Okay, like so. And then I'm going to take the same brush and I'm going into this brush that is called Gerd. Or Gourd. Gerd. Gourd. I don't know. I'm going to concentrate it more on the end. Like that outer part. Yeah, it's more of a foresty, grassy green type of number, but I think the combination is quite funny. I think I'm also going to put a little bit of that decay color so I can really... Um, like connected to my outer corner, don't be too crumbly. Like just a little bit and I'm going to connect it to my outer corner. Like so. And I'm going to go into that maze color as well. That is this one. Just, oh, you saw my, there are you sitting, you were there. <laughs> I am taking the same brush and I'm going into that maze color to... Also put it on my lower lash line. And I'm going to concentrate a little bit more in the front. I, I'm, I'm really bad at showing you. So sorry. I'm just, I think I have to, I'm going to spray it. I notice that it's really crumbly. So I am going to spray it down a little bit more. Because otherwise it's going to be all up in my eyes. I'm going to put it on the 
um, inner part. You're going to see it when I look up. I'm really bad at showing you this. Well, that's the lower lash line. I think I'm going to just tight line some brown color in there. I'm going to finish up with some mascara and I will be back with my final thoughts. All right, so this is the finished look. I spiced up the lips a little bit with my um, Colored Rain Queendom shade. I just tapped it on a little bit because I think it's better than just a fuzzy. Okay, my final thoughts on this palette. It is very grungy, it's very full, it's very dark. The quality is top notch. It's totally what I'm used to from 50-50 makeup, so no uh, issues there. The only thing, just, just personal preference, is that I think that I could use like something lighter than this May shade to make more of a cohesive look. So this is totally going to be a companion palette for me, but I love that they are finally dabbling into these like pressed duochromes. The shades are, the color story is stunning. All these shades work so well together, are so nicely um, put together. I think that for shades like this and the May shade, they're a little bit more crumbly than this one and this one. You need to spray them down because they are very crumbly. And as you saw with that like pumpkin spice, yeah, pumpkin spice uh, shade, you need to spray them down to make them really show up on your eyes, make them nice and foiled. But other than that, I do really love it. It's 15 euros, so it's not like, you know, an extremely expensive palette at all. So yeah. Okay, guys, that's it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, then please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, because I would love to see you in my next one. Bye.